Hello everyone. <clears throat> Oops. <laughs> Hello everyone. Try again. Hello everyone. <laughs> let me know <laughs> if you let me know if you hear me okay. If you will, please. Pretty please. Let's see who we have here. We have Aftar is here. Mail UK40. Thank you for that. Says hi, Miran. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much, Aftar. Alexander Orid is here. Says hi, Miran. Alex, 35 male, Skopje, Skopje, what is Skopje, oh, is that where you are, where is Skopje, uh, it says when brain malfunctions and grabs our attention causes bad feelings, in which ways to fix it, I have watched the video of Jeffrey Schwartz for steps, but I can't understand it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I give you the video that I made in regards to four, uh, four, four steps, and you can watch that because that I've written everything down for you as he has described, but I also explained it. So that can be a helpful thing for you. So hang on. All right. There it is. Oh, sorry. That's the link for the video that I've made for that. And that will help you out and clear things out for you how to do it. This is, uh, I don't understand it. Well, it or how deal with feelings who make alive the connection grabbing attention and feelings intrusive thoughts versus feeling well i can't understand what you're saying let alone <laughs> yourself understanding what the hell you're talking about <laughs> let me see where is this thing hanging like that all right <laughs> For that sort of thing, you need to go to my uh, my uh, site, www.mindthatseekstruth.com. Mindthatseekstruth.com. Make an appointment for us to chat on Skype about your questions and concerns, and I will uh, explain and explore with you in detail. And here, I can't just keep going 
in a complete consulting mode for one question, which that takes half an hour at least, or one hour, if I just want to be quick about it. Uh, so go make an appointment with me, and by all means, we'll chat and, and uh, explore all your questions. Because I have elaborated and analyzed this a thought through it for days, months, hours, continuously, and I've come up to understandings, how to connect things. But in a conversation and exploration, we can come up to it. I can't just simply give you one sentence to help you understand. There's so many components and steps involved to be able to connect them all together and see how it actually manifests itself, what you're here um, alluding to, that when brain malfunctions and grabs our attention, causes bad feelings in which ways to fix it and so on and so forth. So it's, it, it's not just one sentence that you can get it. We have to go through a whole, it's, it's like saying to you, what's the journey like from here to the ocean? I can't just explain to you the ocean. We got to experience how we got into the car, what road we took, how many uh, potholes were in the, on the road, what sceneries we had, where we stopped. All these are connected until we get to the ocean side and then we bring that into the whole picture to complete the journey. So you need to know the roots of it rather than the connection of it rather than just, okay, this is what you do. That's why you don't understand the fourth step because you haven't understood the connection of all these. Why do I need to relabel a thought? Why do I need to reframe it? Why do I need to refocus it? What does it mean? Why? And then where does the revalue happen and why does it happen automatically? So all of these that Dr. Schwartz have spoken about, the fourth step is when you understood all the components that are involved in OCD and HOCD and whatnot. Then you know why it's so important to do these steps. What's the relationship between these steps and the stage of goal-finding center in the striatum where you have the obsession, you do the compulsion? How does it affect the reward center where you get dopamine because you did the compulsion? Why do we need to do these four steps and how is it connected to not letting this thing affect the third circle in the striatum, in basal ganglia, which is habit center. And how is it connected? And are we still doing the OCD because of the obsession? We do, we do the compulsion because of the obsession? Or are we doing it for the dopamine? Or is it really now dopamine? Or is it because of the habit? So all these understandings and the components involved will help us to understand why the fourth step and how is it going to help and what is the role of neuroplasticity and rewiring and how we can rewire because it's connection with the neuroscience of habit, with the habit center. So all of that will make it clear for you why you do the four steps and how to do it because you know why you're doing it. You know the... The, the connection between the, the portals or point of connections, however you want to say it. <laughs> All right. Dan Eilert is here. Hello, Dan. And Orlando Suna says, Goose afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, yeah. Mehran. And good afternoon to you too, Orlando. This is Orlando Osuna, male, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thank you for that. So I've been away from my ex for seven weeks. 
now and my mind has been trying to putting a puzzle together about two about who my ex really was well you know this is a great question but there is a very simple answer to it you see we can understand the male gorilla far easier and better than a woman <laughs> and this is not being facetious it's because we're only one chromosome away one or two is it one i think from the male gorilla but we are way many chromosomes away from a woman we cannot easily understand it's not because they are really sensible or they're above we just bloody hell we can't connect with their brain functions and magnetic magnetic fields uh, that's why you can expect yourself to be in more harmony and understanding the purpose and the meanings of the activities and utterings <laughs> if they could the uh, you know male gorilla than you would so expecting that i i don't understand it i should understand it that's futile you just don't need to be so focus on understanding them when you when you realize that it is just a sort of an impossibility to understand what the woman really means in all aspects and all the time in sometimes yes we can but in sometimes in some cases when you don't understand don't be wondering that why i can't understand is <laughs> it because it's not fucking obvious Sometimes they themselves don't know what the fuck it is that they're doing and why they're doing it. They just have that <laughs> that ability to be like that. We don't. So don't, you know, beat yourself up so much. Don't expect to understand everything. Just, just let it be. Okay, that's what she wanted to do. Fine. But trying to understand why she broke up, who she was, why? Did, listen, if you lived with her for so long or be with her and you still couldn't get out what she is you don't need to now find out what she was you couldn't get it when you were interacting to it with each other now you want to figure it out when you're not even in interaction. just just leave it it's waste of time trying to prove i can understand see this is what the women have done they want you to prove to them that they can understand it but they are not finding themselves responsible to be comprehensible <laughs> they just want to do what they do, say what they say, and they want us to understand. But it's not something logical for us to understand in many things, not everything, in many things. I'm not trying to put women down. Far from it. You all know that I love women, adore them, respect them. But there are certain things about them that makes us go nuts by trying to understand and give logic to their behavior when often there is none so you're looking for something that doesn't exist and that's gonna exhaust you <laughs> okay that's my summation for merry christmas <laughs> merry christmas everybody joy in the life by knowing these facts you don't have to understand everything about women because it's impossible there was this movie in the jungle to jungle Dave Allen, uh, and, and he was trying to get married to this uh, uh, hot, younger chick. And uh, he had to, um, in order to do that, he had to divorce his ex, his wife that were now separated. And she was living in some, uh, some missionary um, um, capacity in Africa, and she was a doctor and so on. So... Tim Allen traveled to that neck of the woods in the world and the plane landed and he was there to meet the uh, his his ex to sign the papers and divorce and go on instead of her showing up her lawyer showed up some <laughs> some local man and Tim Allen said where is she she's supposed to sign these things why is she doing that and in that the answer from the <laughs> chubby lawyer <laughs> said that well <laughs> he who knows what women wants knows everything 
But even God himself doesn't know that. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so that's the gist of it. Now, we go on, Orlando. <laughs> Don't spend your life solving puzzle that the women write. If it was solvable, they would not make it a puzzle. <laughs> And Joe Crow says, I used to swim before the pandemic, very often at the college swimming pool for over two decades. I was happy when the gym reopened. My doctor told me that I could swim after I took the fourth shot. Oh, Jesus. I hope you didn't take that shit. <sighs> And Orlando says, now, I now realize that she lied to me and was still not over her previous boyfriend. <laughs> she kept communicating with him behind my back. It seemed to me at least, although I can't prove it 100%, but I have a gut feeling. This makes me very angry because I trusted her advice, advice on how to deal with this. Well... You trusted her, that's on you. Expecting her to forgo her selfishness and her need for attention and affirmation through whichever means she can find um, possible for her, that's not logical because you think she's in a relationship to make you happy but she's in a relationship with you to make herself happy. Every human being on earth finds him or herself as the most important person in the world. Beside your children and parents and all that, but you're the most important person in the world. So she's not there to make you happy. She's in a relationship because she could fulfill her desires and her needs, and she's there to make herself happy. Now, if she coming there with that attitude and holds others responsible to make her happy, that means she's not in control of her own happiness. She can't instigate that inwardly. Therefore, she will never be happy whether she's in a relationship with you or anybody else. So while she's in a relationship with you, she's still not satisfied because it's not inwardly a um, function of hers to be happy. So she's going to be talking to whomever else she can find that she could uh, that they could uh, give her affirmation or some kind of a satisfaction or some kind of recognition or attention. Most women are looking for attention, and this is the pain of most of us men, that women don't seem to understand. The attention they're seeking from other men, it may be therapeutical for them, but it's poisonous for us because we, each one of us, consider ourselves the top dog, the better man ever in any echelon. When a woman seeks attention from other men, we don't like it because we think indirectly she's not satisfied with the attention she gets from me. She's not exclusive from me. So that plays with your head. So you need to let all that go and understand that the woman is not necessarily a logical being all the time. None of us are, but more so in the emotional aspects of life, emotional department, women are not logical or cannot see things the way we men do. So instead of being bothered and expecting her to see things the way you do, she's a woman. She won't be able to see it that way. And no matter how much you explain to her about all these other intentions that other men have when she interacts with them, they won't understand because they're not necessarily thinking like the men who are trying to make advances toward her. They're not necessarily thinking like them. So they can't see that other people, other men, when they say hello to them, it just translates, can I fuck you? They can't see that. So therefore, stop trying to portray them because their intention to interact with other women, other men, is not how other men act, men's intention is when they're interacting with women, most women. In most cases, not all cases. So stop making it a story out of it. 
But in your case, well, it's on you that you give it so much, uh, so much value. So that's what she was. So that means she was not qualified to be your girlfriend because she couldn't be supportive. She couldn't be um, selective. She couldn't be exclusive. She couldn't be, um, you know, um, discriminating. And so you walk away. That's what you do. When you communicate and express your feelings and the issues, and if they don't understand it after having exhausted this chapter of sharing information and experiences in negotiating the life, then you just simply have to respect their uh, um, choices and move on. But most of us want to stay and change them. They won't. They either have gotten it at the age that they are, like if they're old enough, over 30, they've understood, or they haven't. If they haven't, either they're stupid or they're neglecting understanding these sort of important things, or they simply pretend they don't understand so they could still benefit from the attention of other men because that is what they're looking for. They want attention because they're weak-minded. They are not confident. And in order to get confident, they want attention. So they attend to themselves, their looks and all that, but not because they, not because it's a fact that they don't know what's out there. They pretend they don't know, that they're innocent. So they can, under that pretense of that, I don't know really, I don't think so. They're all good people. So they can get that attention. And that's what they thrive for. So if that was one of the things that she was into, well, why do you want to understand it? Move on with your life. Life is too short. Another one. The, the problem is when you get used to a woman, they become like a brand of a drug. Like you don't want another drug to get high. You want that particular brand. Like a cigarette. You want that particular cigarette. The smokers can understand that. I'm not a smoker, but I know how it works. The smoker wants that certain exact brand of a smoke, even though they all have nicotine. But in order for him to get high, or if he's using some substance, wants the same brand. Otherwise, it won't have the same effect that he's looking for. When we are in love or when we are in a relationship and get used to a woman, when we break up, we still have the same kind of an addictive feeling about the brand, about that woman. Even though other women have the same abilities, if not even better, to give us that excess, that high, that climax of the excitement, that, that connection. But we still want, at least for a while, until it wears off, the, the, um, um, the withdrawal sim, sim, uh, syndrome goes away. We still want this brand, this very woman, because it's a feeling of, I'm a hunter, and the hunt just escaped. I can't stand that because we come from the background of every time we went on a hunt a million years ago, it was live and die. If we get the hunt, we live, we survive, our family survive, we eat. If don't escape, then we go hungry that day. It's disaster. So hunt became very important. And we still carry the same feeling when we are with a woman, with our girlfriend, with a woman that we broke up or we spent time together. Still looks like a hunt when she leaves because we consider women and that emotional need, like food, as important, as necessary, as food is to us. So we consider it a survival necessity. So when she leaves, we feel a hunt has left, and we are now in danger of not being able to survive. These emotions come from a million years ago, that anything having to do with our survival was very, very important. And we're still carrying the same feeling and dangers and anxieties toward things that has to do with our survival towards women, our woman, the woman that we were in a relationship with. But you got to understand that today is different. You, you you miss the hunt? Well, you go to supermarket, there are lots of meat available there. So you the girlfriend leaves you. Yes, you're still going to be hurting and all that for a while. But focus on the fact that there's so many amazing women out there and possibilities are endless. It's always possible to find another even better, more qualified, more compatible woman if you just give it enough time and effort and get yourself away from that need for that same brand. Just 
allow yourself to try another cigarette <laughs> you may get the same high i'm sure you will <laughs> so that's not a that's not a, um, a, a plug for cigarettes no i'm against <laughs> smoking and all the kind of drugs and whatnot so <laughs> let's go to <laughs> let's go to um and Joe says, yet my parents told me not to swim because the pandemic is still around. I walk by the pool often when I work out there, and it is hard to break the attachment when I see others swim. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. They've made us all crazy because of all these bullshit and lies and so on, but when they create a psychosis in our brain and make us be fearful of what is most important to us, which is our health and survival, then we don't want to risk it, even though if the whole information about this whole pandemic has in large part, as is now proven by data and the European commissions and everywhere else, it was all fucking bullshit and lies and to the, to the levels of insanity. And now the truth is coming out, that uh, even the European Commission put uh, one of these idiots from these pharmaceutical companies and point blank asked them, did you ever test this to see if it stops spread, if it prevents you from catching? And they said, no, we don't know if it did at all. <laughs> so <laughs> they know it was all bullshit, but they still want people to inject this thing shot after shot. I have no understanding why, but people make their own choices and you can research and find out what other independent researchers are talking about, and if that's uh, something that you should rely on or not, it's all up to you. I've made my own decisions. I don't get that shit in my system. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Taddy says, hello there, hello there. And uh, Orlando says, she was sleeping with me and she was at the same time communicating with her ex-boyfriend and this lasted for months it seems at least to me yeah yeah okay i understand and xd says hello sir i'm glad to say that two weeks have passed since i have hocd and i feel better i felt better when i explained to my close person what i'm going through and what's the way of dealing with it it felt better hearing my voice saying what's the problem and how to deal with it okay good and joe crow says in my local recreation center there was free trip to go to orchard beach but my parents would not allow it because they felt that it was not clean enough. Well, I don't know how clean that beach is, but for heaven's sake, you can't get any shit from the ocean as far as uh, flu is concerned, it's water. But if the water is contaminated with debris or with shit and stuff like that, well, so that's a different story. I don't know that beach. And Stephen is here, says, uh, good afternoon, Meron. Hello, good afternoon, Stephen. I thought uh, <laughs> we were supposed to chat yesterday uh, at 3.15. What the hell happened to you? What's going on with you? Keep making appointments and not showing up. <laughs> I'm not going to put slots away from you uh, for you when you call anymore, unless I see registration. <laughs> because I hang around and switch around things, but then no news. Um, he said, was on my way out to head to the gym, but it's raining now. So, gym is not raining inside of it, <laughs> unless it's an outside gym. I went to the gym last night and night before. It's a good training it was, and look forward to it to go tonight as well. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's covered, so what's the big deal about it? Steven said, I finished all training at my job finally. Now they're putting me on night shift, which will be tomorrow. I'm hoping I won't fall asleep <laughs> at work. 
but it's only three days a week, so it shouldn't be too bad. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you toughed it up, toughened it up. I remember the times that we were talking about it, and you were kind of ready to <laughs> hang up the towels. And so you can see now it was a good decision that you're now more experienced. Your resume is on a bigger, higher echelon. You feel more confident. The job is not as difficult as it used to seem. Now your training is going to help you, and these resources that are available to you, you can always rely on them. You know the ins and outs of it, nooks and crannies of that whole, or, or, whole organization and process of helping yourself when you need uh, some information. So life is getting better as far as that job is concerned. And that's good news. Congratulations. Um, Ina J says, EJ Girl 32 Korea. Ah, hello there. Says, uh, your videos are the only thing that helped me get over my ex years ago. Now I share your wisdom about pebbles and apples <laughs> excellent to all my friends who feel stuck well don't just share the apples and the pebbles share the channel let them know that this channel exists and let them all come in and enjoy and uh, get supported there's so much information we have now maybe over three thousand videos on this channel pretty much anything um that might concern you anything under the sun, after breakup, we have a video on it. So these are actually, it's a very important channel, in my opinion, I must say, and I'm unanimous on that. Of course, I could be biased, but hey, <laughs> so it is. Um, so um, we, we also now have expanded to OCD and all subsets of OCD and the whole concept of it, how it can... Be helped and how to understand it all the thought process interpretation of thoughts and understanding of the separation between brain and you and so on these are very important information that most people in the world don't know about that's why psychological problems so prevalent is so visible and so there and many people just simply have to better understand their own psyche at least they can resolve some of these uh, issues simple issues internally inwardly by the knowledge that has been created and given to us by the masters of hundreds of years ago in regards to what is thoughts what is thinking what is consciousness where does it come from what is the relationship between the two fear desire ego and mechanical process order the role of it in our um, you know in our in the movement of the psyche and in our comfort zone and tranquility and stability and uh, uh, harmony with uh, with our lives all of that is available, plus all the uh, information from the uh, neuroscientists and um, uh, psychologists and so on that used to gather around Mr. Jiddu Krishnamurti and ask and explore their questions, including Dr. Bohm, who was the uh, quantum physics professor in the UK, and they were all for years. And all that information, plus the information put out by again uh, different uh, neuroscientists and psychologists psychotherapists about ocd and subsets of ocd has expanded my research and has cap has given me capability of being able to sew them all inward information about the psyche and movement of the psyche and the scientific philosophical and scientific end of it from the neuroscience and and neuroscience of habit and the researchers um, such as research of um, that Dr. Schwartz, uh, Dr. Philipson, Dr. Jan Weiner, Dr. Egnar, Dr. Speary, Dr. Penfield, Dr. Owen, Dr. Leibet have done. Having studied these, some of their experiences and uh, watched their programs or lectures, expanded my research so I can now incorporate that information plus the philosophical information that has been uh, taught for the past uh, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, starting from the master who pioneered it in the 1920s 
Mr. Jiddu Krishnamurti and expanding expanding it to the um, to the scientific um, end of the understanding of these uh, challenges. Well, we now have a channel that can really support lots of lots of people with their um, challenges that they face on a day-to-day basis based on their relationships or um, some uh, psychological needs and in, for information. So uh, it's a good channel, and I hope that you guys will, will spread the word because it's been 12 years, and look, with the quality that we offer, we still have only, what, 26,000 subscribers? It should be 26 million as far as I'm concerned. Because these are day-to-day -day needs that everybody because but we are invisible. So make us visible, guys. Make us visible. If you have had any kind of a benefit from this channel, which you can see all of it is free. Nobody asks you for any money. And live streams are free. And the only time that is not free is when you make an appointment with me on Skype through my site, mindthatseekstruth.com. Well, and it can't be. Otherwise, we can't survive. So the least you can do is to promote it. Talk about it in chat lines, in wherever it is that you socially function, and help us grow so we can reach more people and help more people. And anyhow, delighted to hear that. Ina. XD says, now I finally got out of my home and started training football again. I want to say thank you because you helped me a lot. You're quite welcome, dear. You're quite welcome here. Don't be afraid if this thing comes back again. It's just a glitch in the brain. It's like having a cold and you get rid of it and it might come back again, so you get rid of it again. Or having a diarrhea, you get rid of it and you might come back and you get diarrhea again, you get rid of it again. So don't panic if it hits you back again. No big deal. There's no sign of anything. It just means you got to keep doing the same thing until eventually you get so good at it that hardly ever shows up. And if it does, you know exactly what it is. You won't be bothered. All right. Taddy says, I tried to understand my ex. Listen, Taddy. <laughs> Listen, Laddie. <laughs> we need to know uh, a little bit about you, as it's a protocol here. Age, gender, and where you're tuning in from. I don't know how old you are, what your gender is. You're a man or woman. And I got to know that um, whatever your gender is, and I got to know where you're tuning in from, which city. So that helps me a little bit about kind of having an idea who you are, where you are, what your cultural background is, language or, you know, age and, you know, all these things that is necessary to tailor make the answer to your questions and so on. And Stephen L says, it's weird when I'm, off, I stay busy going to the gym, fixing my house, talking to friends. But when I'm at work, I feel lonely and think about the X more thoughts take over and it spirals downwards. Well, you know, that is why I showed you and I sent you the four steps. Because every time those thoughts come in, regardless of what it is, it's an OCD thought. Before you know it, it turns into OCD because it's constant repetitive thoughts. And it feels like the more you think about it, you think that you will solve it or you will change the outcome. That's why you keep going in there because you want to fix things. And because the brain doesn't realize that this is a memory, it's dead, doesn't exist. There's nothing you can do about it. No changes can be made. It's just an echo because the brain cannot tell the difference between virtuality and actuality, it keeps going back in there and try to reiterate the same goddamn things and logics and excuses and anger and the shouting and the you know discussions and all that that you do in order to, as if you're talking to that person, because in the memory, everything seems real to the brain and the brain wants to try to explore and, uh, you know, to, to, uh, express itself as if it's all possible to make changes or say your frustrations as if the person is there. So you got to rise beyond that and use the four steps of Dr. Schwartz, as I've explained in the video and the text that I've sent you, and um, deal with it rather than keep falling for the same 
a trap and get into it deeper and deeper. Look, guys, one of the reasons that many of you have a hard time to move on, listen carefully, is not because she was the greatest chance in your life or greatest opportunity, greatest candidate, best candidate for you or anything like that. It's not because of that. It's not because you're missing that amazing entity. That's part of it. However you want to think of it, you're addicted to her, you had a relationship with, and you have that need and need of intimacy and all that. We, we know how it goes. We've talked about it enough. But there's another component element that uh, we never talked about it in the way I'm talking about it now. And that's one of the reasons you're angry and frustrated and you don't want to let go and you're pissed off. And that's not just because she's not with you and you're used to her and having sex with her and all the other things, emotional needs that was being met by being in that relationship. As oscillating and up and down it might have been, but still you're used to that. But the real reason that you're pissed off is because you find her responsible to having destroyed something that belonged to you and you had created. So your creation, which I'm going to tell you about what it is, has been shattered and eliminated or taken away by her. So you're angry at her because she is responsible to have taken away with something that belongs to you. And what is that? That is the image you have made out of her in your mind. She came with certain attributes and qualifications or specifications. She introduced herself to you in a certain way, but none of them, no woman necessarily will introduce herself to you as she is. She has an image of herself in her mind that she sees herself as, or she prefers to see herself as, and she wants other people to see her according to that image that she has created of herself in her own mind. And she expresses the attributes of that image that she has created of herself in her own mind to you. So she's not really presenting herself, her character, her truthfulness, her true self with all the shortcomings and everything else to you to make an assessment and create an image of her in your mind by you. She's feeding you so much information that is not necessarily exactly as she is. It's based on the image she has created of herself in her own mind, based on the fact that she wants others to see her the way she has created that image, not herself, because every one of us has certain shortcomings and those shortcomings have been taken away. It's like a movie has been created and the director has edited the stuff out of it and just given you what is most preferable. And they have, they each have done that. So with that information, you took it and you actually formed it in the shape that you prefer her to be. That your need is of a girlfriend. You took this girl with all the information that she fed you, some right, some not right, and you took that and you modified it even further to meet the exact needs that you have because you're the most important and complete and perfect person in the world, so your choice would be the most perfect choice and that perfect choice is not necessarily existence in the actuality you had to create that in order to fit what you expect and in order to fit your personality and your echelon in life so you made her the goddess that she never was neither by her own expressions towards you in initial information she gave you nor by the way you actually created the image of her in your mind and you started having a relationship with her image because you have an image of yourself in your mind, which is not exactly you, but that's the image you have of yourself. 
at least you try to strive to meet that image because that's who you think you are or you want to be. You have a goal. You're striving. You're making yourself better. And with that image, you feel a higher echelon of a woman is deserving you. So you created her to be an image that would fit and suit the image you have of yourself. These two images are having a relationship. Now, when she leaves you, the actuality of her, the same person that introduced herself in any way, shape, or form that she did, leaves the relationship, she actually shatters this very perfect image that you have created of your girlfriend in your mind, and you're having a relationship with her. That's what pissing you off, because you had created the perfect woman, and you accepted her one way or another. You came to a conclusion that this is the perfect choice for me. And I'm going to be making my decision based on this is it. Okay, I accept. She's my girlfriend and I want to be with her. And you convince yourself. And once you have convinced yourself, therefore you bestowed upon her. She's the best. She's the chosen one. And now she's taken away by her leaving you. That image is no longer true. Even though it was never true. It was an image. But you were accepting it as her actuality. So you were seeing her physically, having physical relationship with her, but you were actually having a relationship with the image of her you had created of her in your mind. And now that she's not there, that image of perfection that you had created of her in your mind is now also cannot be relied. It doesn't exist anymore. You're pissed off because she took away the very perfect thing that you had going for yourself, which never was a perfect thing. And you're pissed off. You're trying to explain to her, all the things that you do in your memory, not because she was so great, because she fucked up something that you had created and belonged to you and you can't have access to it anymore because the actual physical entity of it that was connected to it is gone. Therefore, that image is now no use for you because there is no presence of it in actuality. It's like you had something that you had a mask on now that something is not there anymore, so the mask is there, you can't fucking do anything with the mask. There's no place to hang it. That's what's pissing you off because you say, I made this mask, it's mine, but I can't use it because you fucking thing you left. Now my mask, that is a perfect thing and I was happy with it, I can't use it. Capiche? So understand that what you were having in a relationship was an image, wasn't real anyhow. And what you had created was all bullshit anyhow because that wasn't her. Why? Because she's not with you. If she was so perfect, she wouldn't have done what she's done, whatever she's done, left or whatever else. So you now say, okay, I'm going to go and meet somebody else and I'll be aware that the information I get from that new person is going to be part bullshit and part her. So I'm going to make a certain kind of image that is not so perfect. And if I do, I will be aware that if she leaves, this image will also disappear. And this image is not something that my life depends on it. I will always be able to find another person, make another image, maybe even better than this one. So living in illusion, life is an illusion. An illusion that you focus on becomes your reality. Stop focusing on the illusion that you have created. Therefore, you come back to the actuality and you see there's so much amazing things in reality and actuality of life that you don't fucking need her nor the image you made of her in your mind and you can go on and be free. I hope that helps you out. All right. Let's go to... To Kaza Kowalski. Now tell me if you can find any of these contents anywhere else. God damn it. <laughs> this channel should have millions of subscribers and I'll hold you guys responsible for it not having it. Damn it. <laughs> and to Kaz Kowalski says, hello, Mehran. Lucas here. Hello, Lucas. 34 male Poland. Oh, land of beautiful women, Poland. It says, how to sustain good mindset that provides us staying motivated? Any universal advice? Well, what other choice do you have other than being striving forward and positive? What's the alternative? Being miserable and letting the world shit on you. 
focus on the fact that sometimes in life there's only one thing to do. That's the only choice. Doesn't matter if you like it or not. That's the only logical choice to survive. If you think of life being a buggy, a carriage, you know how the old west few horses were pulling a buggy and this buggy was connected to the horses with lumber wood beams and leather and stuff with the horses so if the horses would stop the buggy would also stop because it couldn't crumble or crush or fold the wood or the timber that was connecting the buggy to the horses it would just stop the horses stop buggy stops but I want you to, to focus on buggy being life, representing life, and it's connected to a horse that's representing you, human being. But it's connected not by the board or the beam or the wood, connected by chains, foldable chains, yeah? The horses are pulling the buggy via a chain, thick chain, yeah? But this chain is chain. It just can crumble, fold, and squash and all that. So as long as you're running, the buggy is coming. Life is behind you. You're the horses. You're running. Life is coming. So you're ahead of life. Cannot hurt you. You're running. When there's an obstacle on the way, if your horses, if you stop, what's going to happen? The buggy is going to Rush and crash right back into your, your butt, your back, breaking you down. So the only logical choice for the horses in that scenario is to jump over the obstacle. Because the buggy is not going to stop. Buggy is coming. Either run fast and jump over all obstacles because that's your only choice to survive and beat life or if you stop and stumble and not jump be afraid the buggy is going to crush you in the back because it's just connected through chains so when you ask me the mindset the mindset is that never give up continue advancing in anything reasonably of course don't infringe on other people's uh, freedom <laughs> so that's my advice universal advice i guess and teddy says oh i'm sorry mail 24 from poland ah teddy's also from poland all right let's go back to teddy he says i tried to understand my ex fatal mistake but <laughs> every time when i asked about reason of breakup I was getting a different reason all the time because the reason is not was not you. When the reason is not you, you can't do anything about it. And it's frustrating because you always tend to think I'm part of the equation, so the reason must be me. No. Often you're not the reason. The reason is her. And when she's the reason for the breakup, for her own inner challenges there's nothing you can do and if you realize that you'll be free you don't give a shit but as long as you're bought into her bullshit that you're the party you're the reason for her decision you fucked up because you bought into bullshit so every time i asked for a reason of breakup i was getting a different reason you say that's because the reason wasn't you all the time. So I guess I realize on my own that she doesn't know. She knows, but it's not you. She just wants you to think it's you because nobody wants to take the blame for breaking up something. Everybody wants to be shiny. I was good. I was good. He was bad. And that's usually the case. It says, my ex was addicted for attention. Thanks for the wise word. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. 
Stephen says, it's weird. I'm, okay, we talked about that. Daniel says, hi, Mehran, mail 37. I have a date Thursday. Ah, congratulations. So amazing and exciting. With a great 26-year-old lady. Why do you call her lady? You're already putting her on a pedestal. She's a 26-year-old woman. That's it. Let her prove to you she's a lady. Don't go in there with all the... Uh, <sighs> Let's see who she is. Stop thinking that you have a date with the concept of sex. I have a date with vagina, with climax, with sex, intimacy. Oh, no. You have a date with a human being. And see if she qualifies for the rest of it. Who is she? What is she bringing to the table? What makes her tick? What's in her consciousness that makes that beautiful body function? But if you think of her, that all there is to her is that sexuality that you're attracted to, you will not be able to make a right decision based on proper information about what she's all about, what's her consciousness like. You will have a relationship with the consciousness. You never have a relationship with that body. The body is part of the relationship, but at the outset, the body acts as an initiating, invitation factor between the two people. But the relationship takes place in the consciousness, when the consciousnesses find compatibility and bond. So try to understand what is making this body tick, move. What's the command center like? That's where you're going to have a relationship. Of course, I don't want to philosophize the, your date. Go on and have a great time and be funny, be good and make her, to treat her well and so on and enjoy her beauty and so on and have a physical contact if it's appropriate and whatnot, all that. But be aware that you're having a relationship with a human being. You're having a date with a human being. The consciousness is where the relationship takes place, not her body. Her body is very important at the beginning, but eventually what keeps it going is your compatibility, but that happens in the conscious level. So don't put her on a pedestal already with a 26-year-old lady. 26-year-old is not a lady yet. Unless it's 18th century and they've grown and, you know, bred to be a lady like from age 18 or 17 or whatever. Okay? So you're, you're, you're brainwashing yourself that you're going out with someone higher or you're so full of yourself that you want even I or anybody else who's hearing it, think of her, your choice, a lady higher up. I'm not being uh, scolding or rude to you. I'm just trying to deliver as a, a close uh, counselor, uh, on a friendly counselor. So uh, don't be um, offended. I I mean these words sometimes uh, could be stinging, but I want you guys always understand, I say whatever I say with love, with care. I want you guys to become wiser and more informed, intuitive, and equipped with weapons of wisdom. So think of yourself as flowers and think of me as a bee. I sting you. It might hurt. But together, we make honey. Hmm? That's the intention. Not to hurt you or disrespect you all, any of you. Um, and he says, Thursday with the 26th of day. Any final tips for a good date? I just gave you. <laughs> Go in with a down-to-earth mentality. Don't put her high, don't put her low. She's a human being. Because most women do not have the kind of confidence that you think they have. Because they're pretty and you need them, you need sex with them, you need intimacy with them, you're drawn, you're programmed, your genetics are geared to be attracted to them for procreation. And that overshadows your focus on the fact that they are a sentient being with the ability to think and characteristics, and you got to see if those characteristics are in line with your values or not. You miss that all because you're into their vagina 
and their beauty and the fact that you want that. I change that greyhound hounding attitude <laughs> and try to analyze them. Not overly, but in time, every time, just see how they behave in everything. You may still be attracted to them physically. That's fine. That's a different story. But you may actually, when you're focusing and not justifying every goddamn shit that she does just because she's pretty, that's acceptable. Then if you if you don't do that, you'll be ready to see who she is rather than having your desires to be with her. Put a wool over your eyes and you can't even see who she is from the way she behaves and negotiates any simple outing, you know? So don't be mesmerized while be respectful, kind, generous, and gentleman, and take care of her, protect her, make her comfortable, make her feel good, and don't be so, you know, focused on judging her either. But be aware that your need for her to be with her is not is not supposed to have so much influence on you putting up with the shit that is not in line with your values. But you may forgo those values just because you want to get into her pants. That's not good either, but I understand it. It's hard not to give in so much just because she's got such beautiful face or outgoing personality or legs or whatever it is that you, you, know, you can see of her. So, with that attitude, go have fun, be a gentleman, be nice to her, be kind, make her feel comfortable and safe. Make women feel safe. Make sure you create a safe environment for her to enjoy rather than to be maybe too close to her, maybe too much in her face, maybe talk all the time, maybe not let her talk enough. All the things, maybe try to grab her hand too early when it's not appropriate. Make her feel safe. That's my only and number one advice I have for anyone who wants to go on a date with a woman. Your full focus should be how to make her feel comfortable and safe. Safe, not just from outside and other people and environments and hazards that could come with it, whether with, from people or from objects and whatnot, also safe from my own desires, my own stupidity that might want to do some kind of a behavior, an insult or some kind of an out of place joke or whatever that it could not be uh, acceptable or appropriate or could jeopardize her comfortable feeling, feeling for comfort and make her feel physically or psychologically unsafe. That's your first and foremost goal and focus should be to make your date physically and psychologically feel safe. And that's good. All right. Phoenix. Says, good evening, sir. Hello, good evening, Phoenix. Remember, guys, gender, age, age, gender, where you're tuning in from. And crazy horse, crazy, crazy, crazy horse. Okay. Says, hello, Mehran, 24 male Serbia. Hello there. Says, I'm worried about I'll never find the hot girlfriend. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> But um, through my life, I've had many encounters with women, uh, maybe over 100, and maybe about 58 of them were sort of a relationship, short or long term, short term, but all positive. So my experience tells me there's always going to be another amazing woman hmm? so this thinking of i sometimes worry i will never be a hot guy is bullshit just just don't because what else in your life did you know is going to happen 
before it happened? Nothing. None of them. Any of the girls that you were with, did you ever know that you're going to meet them before you met them? No. You thought the same thing as you're thinking now. I never think I will meet another beautiful girl. Well, you did. But did you know that you will? No, you didn't. But did you? Yes, you did. Same thing higher. Nothing has changed. The flow of the universe and life is the same. Life is a river. It's always in movement. And in through movements, you will pass different parts of the banks of the river and you will see many different things. Plantations and rocks and things and animals and whatnot. All other opportunities flow off the water and all other things that you can't even know because you haven't been there, but you're approaching, you're going there. Just because you can't see something in the field of your vision doesn't mean it's not there. It's like you're standing in the shore of an ocean and you say, there are no ships in the ocean. <laughs> but there are ships. No, there are no ships. There are no ships in your field of vision. But there are ships on their way towards you. You can't see that far. But they're on their way. Even when you see and there's nothing available, but they're on their way. When they're close enough, you will see them. That's the story of life. You can judge right now, but you can only judge for this minute. You can't judge now for what's going or not going to be in the future. But that's what you're doing. I'm worried that I'll never. How can you know where the never is? You're here. You can say, well, I haven't met a pretty girl yet. Okay, fine. But I'm going to the gym right now. Maybe I met something tonight. <laughs> or tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow brings. Have you ever seen Castaway, the movie Castaway? Yeah, Tom Hanks was stranded on that island all alone. But he learned soon that you never know what the waves will bring tomorrow. And that's how he got out of that island, by something that the wave brought him. You never know what the wave brings tomorrow. Watch that movie if you like. Cast away. Beautiful movie. Uh, so, having gone through that, let's go to... And you also say, I'm worried about that finding a hot girlfriend since the hot ones are mostly interested in money. <laughs> yeah, not all hot ones. There are lots of hot ones who are actually got some wisdom in their brains. And they're looking for quality. Don't underestimate the power of being a good man. Women, good women, are looking for good men. And there are not too many good women around and not too many good men around. So you are actually in demand. If you're a good man, you will bound to cross path with a good woman. And she will recognize it. She doesn't want money. She wants more important than that she wants a good human being to trust her to trust him and to be able to feel comfortable and safe and to be able to feel that she's going to be protected by him not flying the coop and being committed being reliable these are far beyond money those ones who are looking for money, that's all they get. But they never get that feeling of safety, contentment, and a long-lasting relationship. And that's what you offer, which is more important than money. There were times in Japan, thousands of years ago, that there were a village... There was a village with farmers that would make food and feed their families. And it was a peaceful village until the bandits, bandits start attacking it every once in a while and taking their chicken and women and food. And so they said, what, could, what should we do? It's been years and this is happening. We can't take it anymore. So they said, let's go and... Asked the old man. The old man's house was outside the town, just outside the town. So they all went to the old man and says, what do we do? The old man said, go hire samurais. He said, but we don't have any money. Samurai wants money if we, you know, 
What do we do? He said, offer them rice. That's what you have in this village. So they went to the town, bunch of them, a congressional <laughs> unit of this Japanese village, I don't know, five or six men or ten men, went to the town, the city, the big city, to look for samurai. They came back beaten up and all that. They went to the old man and says, well, everywhere we went and we said to the samurai, this is what we want, and we offered rice. We got beaten. He kicked our ass and just said, get the fuck out of here. What do you think I am? The old man said, go find the hungry samurai. Look at the wisdom. You got to find someone who values rice. A samurai who values rice and sees the emotion, energy, the value, the importance of it to you that you're offering it to him. That's beyond, that's spiritual. He needs the rice, yes. He can see its value for eating. He's hungry, that fits the bill. He also can see the emotion that is being, that this gift is being offered by. That's the value in it. So a wise samurai is always better than a samurai who's doing it for money. He's probably more skillful too. So you need to find a woman who is beautiful and also has values and understand values beyond money, which we know money is corrupt and money is good if it's used good. But this whole world has been corrupted because of all that value that has been only given to money. And little by little, we took all the real values out of the cultures and traditions and the trust and all the other values that were not physically visible. And we gave it to the dollar, to the money. And now we don't really have valuable life. It's all about money and cost. And that's why everything has gone to shits. Not real values are being realized anymore or focused on. All values supposedly have changed in place to money. And the money itself has no emotion, has no nothing real that it offers. It's just an instrument. And that's why lives have become so unstable because it's based on money, not something concrete, not value, not, not values that cannot be fussed with. And meddled with and manipulated. So look for someone who's looking for real value, not the value of money, because that's a limited and it's not a life making asset. And Ash Drum says, Hey, Mehran, about the question I was going to ask you earlier on Facebook, I'm basically over it now. It was feeling intrusive thoughts, but I'll explain here. Now, I was scrolling uh, through social media, saw a video of a Navy SEAL being interviewed about what's it like to kill. And it's a disturbing video in the sense that he was saying with a lot of pride, how much he enjoys it, and the best feeling. There's a fucked up Navy SEAL. This is weird because I've seen videos like this before, but this one triggered me a little, and I basically started having intrusive thoughts about what if I enjoy killing too? Oh, it's OCD, you know that, and other shit like that. Yeah, well, that's no different than any other intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts is not an action. Just because you thought of something, that doesn't mean that's what you are. If you act on something, that describes you, your actions, not thoughts. Thoughts, as we talked about so many times, thoughts are not you. You're not thoughts. Thoughts are made by the brain. Brain is not you. You're not the brain. So what brain makes is not you. So... Thoughts, about 80, 90,000 thoughts a day, day comes to your mind every day. And all of them intrusive, pretty much. So what do you have to say about that? Thinking of something is not a crime. 
acting on it can be. So, so basically, according to my OCD brain, it would have me believe I am homosexual serial killer. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. And I've moved past now. Do you actually fucking thought with all the th things that I've taught you, we discussed, and you research, and you know, no, you needed to actually think about this? <laughs> Rather than understanding just intrusive thought is intrusive thought. What is talking about, you know, having stick in your hand, your finger in your uh, nose and bring a booger and put it in your mouth <laughs> and enjoying it or doing what you just talked about. Intrusive thoughts, intrusive thoughts. It's a thought. It doesn't matter the content. It's all irrelevant bullshit. But you're focusing on the content of this thought because it's so fucking disturbing and out of this world and unacceptable. This could be something that might have more of a thingy to it than this other thought. This is about me being something that I'm not. It's a thought. The content, topic, doesn't matter. It's the fact that it's intrusive thought, not in line with your values. That's all it matters. That's all. The rest of it is bullshit. It's a thought. It's not an action. So give it up. Move away. All right. Chris Crazy Horse says, I never knew you had tattoo. Yeah, I never knew it either until about four months ago, five months ago. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I gave a story about it. Actually, there is a video that I made about the story of the tattoo, but I didn't upload it, I don't think. Did I? Because I thought, well, who wants to know about my tattoo? Because uh, so many people asked about it, and I explained it in one of the live streams in detail what it was. Uh, so I'm, I cut that portion as a standalone video, but I didn't upload it. Oh, actually, I do. Ha uh -huh. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> there it is. There's the story of my tattoo for you to, if you wish to watch this video, it's five minutes or something. Here it is. That's the link. Yeah, I have one here. <laughs> there you go. And I have one here. <laughs> These are two favorite things that is meaningful to me. And so... My son and I both have it. <laughs> it's very meaningful to us. He, he actually did it first. My, my video explains. And so I followed him. Stanley Cool says you're a legend. Yeah, I can see all the fame I have. And the channel is 2 million subscribers. And our live stream is so popular. We've got 17 people. Woohoo! Today is actually 17. Yesterday was 21. And, but most often, you know, we're like about eight or 12. <laughs> so I wonder, Stanley, where the hell is the actual, uh, you know, use of all this time and effort? I want to see it being used. I want, I want to see lots of subscribers. I want to see millions of subscribers because we've got stuff. We've got content. We've got things. Just today, the stuff that I said today, I guarantee you, you have never heard it anywhere. With any of these gurus and whatnot that are out there talking and trying to help people, you cannot hear these things. I don't even think if you have private sessions with any of these experts, they can even come up to understand what I just said. I don't want to take anything away from them, but I know these things have a lot to do with research about the inwards movement of the psyche. And it's not just about a bunch of uh, set parameters that you want to splurge out that you heard or read somewhere. None of these are read anywhere. These are things that I have gathered by understanding 
the concepts of thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego. By understanding the meaning of images that we negotiate life with and how these images are disposable and are created from one moment during a day to another moment and disposed of and recreated depending on the circumstance and what we are about to deal with and our role in that particular scenario, in that movement, in that space and time of that day, these images are constantly changing. If you're going to buy bread, you have an image of a, of a shopper. If you're working in the store to sell that bread, you have an image of a sh shopkeeper, a clerk. If you're on the bus, you have an image of a passenger. If you're driving the bus, you have an image of a bus driver. If you're in the school, you have an image of a student. If you're teaching the class, image of a professor or a teacher. If you're dealing with your children, you have an image of a father or a mother. If you're with your parents, you have an image of a son or a daughter. All these images constantly changing. You're negotiating your life according to different images that you take and let go. You take and let go. This disappears, another image. And when you break up, the image you have of you ha that you had of yourself in your mind about having a girlfriend, being in a relationship and all that, that image that is what you identified with those days to negotiate and see yourself and have other people see you as someone who has a girlfriend, that image is broken, but you make another image. Very simple, you make another image. But the time between this image disappearing or being tarnished and the next image being created when there is enough ingredients available you suffer as if god damn it this was the only and the last image i could make but you know it's not every day of your life you've been having making hundreds of images during the day depending on what you were doing you're practicing soccer you have an image of a soccer player you're buying a soccer ball you have an image of a shopper for, for sporting goods you're negotiating life with your image. And so these images, you just get attached to them and don't. Don't get attached to the image when it's tarnished. Quickly realize that it was an image that is now shattered. Not me. Nothing happened to me. I'm safe. Only my image through this relationship or breakup or whatever it was, or this deal didn't work out. The image of the success, of the tangible the outcomes of it that image is gone i will make another scenario uh, another opportunity i will create another image because i'm an image maker i do that all my life you have done it everybody has so you're not hurt when a breakup takes place your image is hurt and that image is disposable make another find another make another image another story don't get tired of telling the story don't get tired of painting a picture. Don't let the brush in the hands of others to paint the picture that you want to draw. Keep drawing. Some of them eventually stick. <laughs> Stay on the wall. All right. Zalopi says, wow, that was great. What? That was great. <laughs> I don't remember what I'm saying. <laughs> Daniel says, you missed my comment. Come on. Did I, Daniel? Where the hell was it? Uh, Daniel. Oh. What do you mean? Your comment was that you're 37, you're going out with a 26-year. I spent so much time on that. Don't give me that shit. I didn't miss it. Maybe you wrote that before I got to it, yeah? And Phoenix... LT, Phoenix LT, Phoenix Lettuce and Tomato, says male 24 Lithuania. Oh, Phoenix Lithuania, probably. That's what it is. <laughs> says, um, having these thoughts of my ex. Okay, enjoy it. Uh, one side of me misses her, but the other side sees her with all the flaws and says it's okay that she broke up. Happens. Yeah, I know. Uh, and uh, that's the only thing you got to do in order to move on. Otherwise, uh, you're just going to be getting deeper and deeper, sitting around and keep ruminating for something that doesn't exist. 
It's a memory. Memory is dead. Memory is the past. Past doesn't exist. So your life becomes uh, your life becomes death of the past. Living in the death of the past. Let that all go. Come here. Stay with the moment. Focus on your efforts in life. Efforts equal now. Efforts equal now. If you want to be with the now, present moment, not be in the past, not be in the future, that neither of them exist, focus on the efforts you're making at that movement, at that moment, that, that space and time. Efforts equal time. Because while you're making an effort, you can change that effort to something less, something more, something different. That's the time that you can change things. That's the now. The past and the future don't exist. So focus on the effort to be in the present moment, and then you wouldn't be ruminating on bullshit that doesn't exist and making a life out of it when the, that, that life is simply a death of the, in the death of the past. Zalapi says, you tell it how it is. Great speech. Thank you, but I don't remember which part you're talking about. <laughs> I think that's a good... Uh, Good uh, live stream. I'm going to make some of these and the one before too. Uh, cut them up and then uh, put them as a video because I think we spent, uh, we spoke about some very important things. Phoenix says, yeah, your words sir, put a lot of things in a different perspective. Thank you. I'm delighted to hear that. Please, guys, help this channel out. Promote it. I know you won't necessarily think about it or you don't think it's important. Because most of us, all of us, think the most important person in our life is me, is us, is ourselves. So when you're here and you're benefiting from what it is that you need, you say, okay, my need is taken care of. I don't give a shit about anybody else to promote this channel or not. Who cares? Because I know where it is, so I can go to it and use it. But no, don't be stingy. If you're getting benefit, just imagine how many other people in the world actually need to hear some of this stuff. Their psyche becomes comfortable and they become wiser and more informed. They can handle the negative movement of their psyche and they could understand their psyche better. They can help it to recover from the glitches that it might have and how happy they can get just like you through information. So let us promote this goddamn channel <laughs> so we can help others and I can also make some money. So <laughs> and I can also feel satisfied that I haven't spent my time for nothing. I'm getting old. I want to see more people see this channel before I, you know. <laughs> All right. And Phoenix says, these feelings kind of leave me confused. I feel hurt. But I feel like some kind of opportunity landed here. Yes, of course. You have no other choice. You gotta deal with life. We have no other choice. We gotta deal with life. You gotta do your best. So at least at the end, you will say, I did my best. That's all you can rely on. And that's all is expected of you to deal your best. Oh, my God, Keenan says, 37 male, North Carolina, says, I feel like I'm going through a middle midlife crisis. You're 37, God damn it, yeah? I'm 67. I'm 30 years older than you. That's the time to go through midlife <laughs> and life crisis. What are you talking about? Just because you don't have a girlfriend at the moment. That's it? Nothing else in this world? You have to, you you need to accomplish by just having a girlfriend. Well, I know that's important. I agree with you, but that's not the only thing you got to be waiting for. You got to be active with all other things that you need to, and you feel that you're going to accomplish. You want to accomplish, and in the meantime, you're going to run into some bunch of these beauties that you're looking for. So don't worry about it. Just keep on attending to your life. The rest will come. It says lonely and don't have purpose stuck at my job how can i feel better well 
connect your job to what things you like to do that that having that stupid job actually makes it possible to have those things that you like to do such such as eating such as paying your rent such as going to the gym such as going to the cinema such as having a chance if you have a date to take her out to dinner connect the outcome of your job to the things that you like to do, even though you don't like to do your job. But what it brings to you, it translates to more food in the fridge. Maybe a little bicycle you want to buy or a car you want to buy. So that job that you don't like translates to lots of things that you do like. And instead of focusing on that, you want to, to like everything you do in life, including the job that you like, so you still enjoy the other things that this job will bring you. Well, I like to focus on the fact that there are lots of things I can do with the money I make from, you know, I, I, I worked as a real estate agent for 32 years. I still do that now and then for some clients. But I never liked the goddamn thing. It wasn't my character. There were so many dishonest people in that business, agents and clients alike. And I hated that fucking thing. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but I was so good at it. I knew the law. I was expert in writing contracts. Some of my lawyer friends said, we can't even write such contracts that you write. I would know and I would be honest. I would give good advice to the clients. And if they weren't supposed to buy that property, I would say, <coughs> don't buy this because it's got this problem, this problem. And some of them would say, are you in this business or not? Why do you make us not buy this? I said, because you're going to get stuck with it for this reason, this reason, <coughs> this flaw and that flaw. So I, <coughs> excuse me. A moment. Uh, conducted myself in doing what I didn't like in the style that I wanted, or I could live with it, it would meet my expectations, I'm called, and, um, and uh, ex my expectations. And this is what my father told me, God bless his soul, thanks to that. I was working as a uh, <clears throat> salesman in a battery manufacturing company years ago, I was much younger. And one day my dad told me, Mehran, you're a good man, you like people, you're charming, you're diplomatic, you have a good command of language, and you can explain things well, and people like you. Why don't you go into real estate? I said, Dad, neither you were a wheeler dealer nor my mom was. <laughs> I hate that work. So many charlatans and cheaters and... and um, <clears throat> As the Irish say, chances and cheaters, <laughs> snakes, chances and cheaters are in that uh, in that profession. Uh, my father was a lawyer, <laughs> and he said to me, "Son, do it with the manner and the style and the class that you sit fit, and it's yours, not the way others do, and don't care about how others conduct themselves." So I did it my way. I made good money, had a comfortable life, raised my son. I had lots of time with him, which is cherish it. It was the most important thing for me. But I never liked that goddamn thing. It really gave me lots of stress. I hated every shit of it. But I translated it to what it does for me. It gave me motivation. The fact that I could take my son to Hawaii and stay there for a month and a half, invite a couple of friends even and pay for them as well. One trip, I think we spent a month and a half, $50,000 US. I didn't bat an eye. I enjoyed it. And everybody was saying, why are you spending so much money at this moment? And you spend this for your son and go travel. I said, look, this times will never come back. I cherish every moment, whatever I can do for him. 
and together we'll enjoy a travel and learn and experience life. These times will never come back. And I'm so delightful that I had the opportunity, even though the job that I didn't like and I wasn't in favor of, but thinking about what it could give me the chance to do and accomplish gave me motivation to deal with all these clients and make the money and then go and spend it on the things that I love to do. So it wasn't about I love the job. It was about what the job can provide for me about the things that I love to do and love to buy and love to be engaged with and active in. The opportunity of buying the car and like maybe, you know, the sport activities that my son likes to do, the tennis rackets that were expensive for us to buy. But I could all do all that. Why? All because of the job, no matter if I liked it or not. It was a it was a decent job. It was a uh, honest job for the ones who wanted to be honest. So it wasn't anything illegal or bad. So that was important. The rest of it, if you like it or not, is not important. Find the motivation in what this job translates into your life and the opportunities they can bring for you. That's how you deal with it. You're not stuck with the job. And then eventually, if there's a new opportunity opens up that you find it's better for you, you will switch. But until then, stay committed, focus to do the best job you can do. Why? Because the better you do this job that you don't like, the more opportunities will open up for you for the things you love to do. And it gives you that vehicle to get to the ones that you want to be in your life, whatever it is, activity it is. And the Lagan is here, says, Salam Mehran, 25 May, London. Hello there. Says, how do you deal with letting go of friends who no longer want to keep in contact with you or you have drifted apart from? Well, you drifted apart, you drifted apart. Why do you have to have them all? It has to be two-way streets. If you want them around but they don't want to come around, to hell with them. Move on. Yeah? Why do you have to have them in your life? Because perhaps you haven't made new friends, which you should focus on, or you haven't found enough things to keep you content in life, so you're trying to fall back on old friends to live in the past by having them represent some of the experiences you had in the past because they're old friends. If it's drifted apart, drifted apart, make new. Don't become a, a slave to some old situations if the old is not as willing as you are. <clears throat> Neelesh Sharma says, my doctors prescribed me this medicine called etizolam, etizolam but I don't want to rely on medicine. Why my flight and fight is getting triggered out of nowhere? Well, you know, that's something you got to ask your doctor because I'm not a doctor. I'm not qualified to discuss medical things the way it may sound like it's needed here. But in regards to fight and flight mode, you need to understand that fight and flight mode has a direct connection with thoughts. So you change your thoughts, calm your thoughts, your fight and flight mode will also be affected. One of the things that you can do when you're anxious, fight and flight mode, is manipulating your uh, one of your breathing system, because we have two types of breathing system. Um, one is the one that helps you breathe regularly, like breathe in, bring out. pre buttsinger complex, that's the name of it. But the other one is the one that helps you to even breathe while you're laughing or crying, because breathing is involuntarily, it just does automatically and usually in volunteer things, you can change its rhythm by yourself. But breathing is one of the only systems in, in our body that has 
two separate systems that one of them is pre Budzinger complex, which is the regular breathing that you do during the day, long or short, but it's regular, in, out, in, out, when you're at rest or doing some activity, whatnot. And the other one is paranuclei facial, parafacial nuclei, which is the system where it allows you to regulate your breathing, even if you're laughing or crying, which is not the regular moan. You, you can still breathe, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> still allows you to do that. Now, using parafacial nuclei system, Dr. Huberman explains that using a short way of breathing will help you get out of the anxiety mode. Because the anxiety, uh, I think it was Dr. Freeman, if I'm not sure, maybe I'm mispronouncing his name, I don't remember, it's been long ago, explains that it's like if you keep walking on a soft ground, but you keep walking the same circle over and over and over, you start grinding a groove like a rot, and you go lower and lower into the earth, and it becomes more difficult to come back on top of the road, on the main road, because you're digging yourself a ditch and you're going down and down because you keep walking on the same soft ground all the time. Now, in psychological terms, when you keep getting into ruminating, ruminating, thinking about the same thing over and over, it's like you're creating a rot and you're going deeper and it becomes more depressing and you're anxious and you won't have that opportunity to find yourself on the street level to see other opportunities and walk away and move away from this situation because you've created the rot by keep being in there. So in order to break that, this breathing is like a shock they give to that person who has created the rot and has gone deep into that ground by walking around on a soft ground. You're kind of giving him a jolt to jump out and be on the main road so you can see now he can run away or he can move away or can see other opportunities is not deep in the trenches. So in this case, for regular things that you can do many times during the day, if you feel anxious or fight and flight thing, you do this that I've explained in the videos for you, which I put the link, link here. You're breathing once, and you're breathing one on top of it. And then you hold a few seconds, and then you release it through your mouth or your nose slowly. So it looks like this. And then breathe normally. That one breathing, if you do it right, it will pitch you, put you at such a calm state that you bloody become like a slow motion cartoon like I am right now. <laughs> uh, it's so relaxing. I want you all do that right now. Let's do it together. One, one long breath, and then one top it off, and then hold a few seconds, and then breathe it out through your nose or through your mouth slowly with a little bit of a pressure. So one, two, three. <sighs> breathe normally. It clears your head and everything disappears. There's no more thoughts and no more anxiety, at least for that moment. You can do that two, three, four times, anytime you want, during the day, as many times as you feel needed. But that's a short term. It's not going to, I'm not suggesting this to be replacing your medication or anything. I'm just saying you consult that with your doctor in that regards. But this is something you can do 
whenever you find yourself anxious or fight and flight mode is triggered quickly use this one to untrigger it all right <clears throat> Daniel says, definition of lady, a polite and formal way of referring to one. Yes, I understand that. But you know what I'm saying. You're not saying it because it's too much a lady, because you're hot for her and you want to respect her out of necessity, out of need, out of excitement, out of, you know, that she's hot and you, you want to be with her. So you give that connotation Rather than you can say, you know, I'm going on a date with this girl that I got to know recently. Because that's the stage you are. But I'm going on a date and a lady, you want to create a respect for her in our mind. And that's because we, t we talked about it. It's, a, it's, an, it's an immature expression of respect for someone that by saying a woman or girl is no disrespect to her it's just who she is so giving more it's like going uh, on a re in a restaurant and the waiter or waitress did a good job for you but instead of giving like you know a ten dollar tip which is a great gracious and generous tip you give a hundred dollar tip that's overdoing it and so you just gave a hundred dollar tip to a 26 year old girl and call her a lady you got to figure out what makes you feel that you got to address her that way because you want to give yourself an echelon that I am going out with a lady, so think of me as higher. Or I'm very polite. I call a woman lady, so think of me as higher. I'm just trying to say, come down to earth. You're talking to us here, and you don't need to create a certain echelon for her while she's not here. You're trying to protect her virtue or something. That's all fine. But, you know, the, the point here is that you're brainwashing yourself to use these unnecessary respectful echelons when there are perfectly good positive words to be used. It doesn't need to be a $100 tip at this juncture. That's what was meant. N yeah. Nobody says don't treat her like a lady. Understand me, crazy horse. You are not getting it. Nobody in my conversation said, in fact, I said, be a gentleman, treat her well and all that. Make her safe, safe, safe and all that, right? Remember? But now you're saying, why not treat her as a lady until proven otherwise? Even if it's proven she's not a lady, you still got to treat her as a lady. That doesn't mean you stop treating her properly. But, Nobody says don't treat her as a lady. I'm just saying don't brainwash yourself to call a girl that you're going on a date and she's 26 year old, a young girl, a lady. What has she done to suddenly be? What's the difference? You call her a lady, you call your mother a lady too. Your mother has accomplished important tasks. She deserves to be called a lady. She acts like a lady. She knows what ladylike is. But this is a 26-year-old girl. You don't even know shit from her. And you call her a lady. That's brainwashing you to feel submissive to her. And you're going to fuck up the date if you keep thinking that way. I'm not saying be rude and arrogant or stupid. I'm saying in moderation at the right level. She's a great girl. You respect her. You like her. And you respect her. And you take good care. Did I say respect her? And you take good care of her. But no sense, no reason to call her a lady because it's not fitting. Fitting the conversation. Why do you need to address her a lady when you're talking to us here? I'm going out with this girl that I met. But I'm going out with this lady. You're trying to make an echelon stance for her on her behalf here. That means you need to make her big or for some reason in our eyes. And you shouldn't because that indirectly brainwashes you that she's beyond you, above you, you're below her. No, that's not good. It's, you can do whatever you like.
Or maybe these were the uh, old... Uh, no? I said, just no. Okay. Now he says, thanks, great tips about the date. Okay, good. Gil Gates says, oh, please. I'm sorry you have that last name. <laughs> it has a bad connotation these days. But uh, God bless you. I'm sure you're a great person. Feel better after a breakup two years ago. You helped me realize she's not who she was when I was in a relationship. Ah, okay, good. Thank you for that. <sighs> Ash says, Mehran is a chat. I think you used that before. What is chat? What does that mean? Let me let me search it. Chat. What's it? What's a chat? Slang for somebody. Chad. Chad. Uh, Chad officially the Republic of Chad. Oh, that's Chad. That's a place. No. <laughs> uh, so it must have some kind of, okay, Chad meaning, slang by diction. Okay, let's see this. Chad is a usually disparaging internet slang term used for a popular, confident, sexually active young white male. Its female counterpart is Stacy or Stacy, who is often portrayed as Chad's sexual partner. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm looking for Stacy then. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I certainly appreciate it. I knew you had used that before. It's a, it was a positive thing, anyhow. Thank you for that. Ash. Ash says, homeless samurai on the street corner <laughs> will kill bandits for us. Yeah. <laughs> and they were successful. And actually, they, they, they got seven samurais. <laughs> and they did beat the bandits. It was a beautiful movie. It's an old movie, black and white, with, uh, with um, um, Yomta Musashi, but... Uh, I forgot his name. Gee, I'm blank. Um, Toshiro Mifone. Toshiro Mifone was the star of the show, and um, it was a beautiful movie. That's that's the origin of what they made the movie. Um, seven. What was that? There was another one that made by Steve McQueen and um, and Yul Brainer and a few other Charles Bronson, Lee Marvin, and I forgot the last one. Yeah, yeah, and so that was then. It was a Western movie, but the the model was Seven Samurai. I forgot the name of it. I don't know what it was. I'm blank. Okay. Chrissy's horse says, Mehran reminds me of Rumi, the philosopher. Oh, my goodness. That's a great uh, compliment. Thank you for that. <laughs> I don't think so. But thank you for the kind words. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, guys, if you don't mind, uh, let's take a short break, just about a few minutes. I'll be right back. I get it. warm up my tea and... Uh, take my blood pressure pill i'll be right back subscribe on my channel visit my channel and go through the videos that you might be interested in mind that seeks truth.com making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on skype and discuss what concerning you i'll talk to you soon well we too like the iceberg have thousand times bigger powers that is not visible and we must why is it something we're rambling on and I expect you to accept it? Or is there actually another power within us? Would you come and help me out? Okay. What I want you to do is put your hands underneath my arms uh -huh. and 
just lift me up. There we go. Okay, now. That's my physical part, right? Mm. Same thing. Again, with that. just want to see if there's any difference. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Now, this, go ahead when you're ready. Go ahead. So you see, this is different than what he was doing. And I'm not really doing anything. Doing anything. You're convinced? Yeah. So are you guys convinced that there is something other than, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.
And we're back after station identification. So we lost five people. <laughs> you guys didn't have the guts to stay around for five minutes so I can have my pill and, you know, have my tea. Jesus. What do you think this is? Restaurant? <laughs> so where were we? We were at... Um, We were here. Mozakeral, Mozakerol, Mozakeral. It's 35 male Australia. Ah, Australia, 4, 4 a.m. and another 7 hours. That's 8. It's 11 a.m. there, isn't it? 11.03. says, um, after my breakup, I focused most of my time learning math, including college-level calculus, that I didn't initially pick up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. I'm more interested in learning than finding a partner. Okay, fair enough. Excellent. Enjoy it. Uh, the partner will show up while you're doing something you like and you enjoy, and that could be the right atmosphere when they show up without you expecting it. Perfect. And Rob, or Rob D, says, Mail 36 UK. So still gutted my what? Still gutted my gorgeous ex left me. Oh, still gutted. Is that what you're saying? My gorgeous ex left me, and I am so frightened I will never find <laughs> that beautiful feeling again in my life with anybody else. Ah, well, come on now, don't be like that. That's so stupid saying that. It may be okay, maybe you won't find it exactly, but you will find a different version of it. Not every love is different. There is no two love ever in anyone's life that has been the same feeling. That's the one thing about love, that it's a frequency. It's not a feeling. Feelings you kind of can at least find similarity like you know when you go horseback riding you have the same feeling when you do it next time when you have a, let's say your favorite food you feel same elated and amazed and so feel the deliciousness of it and the feeling it gives you in pretty much the same way many things that is the same activity and this and or created via the same kind of a experience would have similarity in how you feel every time, at least some, if not all. But love, every time is different, but still love. Same qualities, same attributes, same amazing emotions, but yet completely different. Have you noticed? So talking about that, I will never have that with, well, okay, maybe, because... You're never the same person at the same time either. You had that what you felt you having with that certain person at a certain stage of your game, of your life, certain development, certain level of consciousness, certain advancement. And thinking that I will never have that, because you definitely will not have, never have that, because to have that, you should go back in time to be in the same stage of your life and then experience the same things the same way. While consciousness, experiencing the same experience in two different time span, time and space, you will have a different feeling and different understanding, different development, different take out of that same experience. Why? Because the weaves of the fabric of your consciousness have changed. Therefore, the same experience when it falls into it, when it affects it, when it hits on that fabric, 
is going to bounce back differently because the fabric is now changed. You can be the same tennis player, but if the vertical bouncy wall that you're, ex you're practicing with, standing over and hitting the ball with the racket and hits the, the, the canvas or this uh, screen, the, the bouncy screen, and comes back to you, if you change the weaves of this bouncy screen, the plastic material, the thickness of it, the weaves of it, the, the, con the, the ingredients of it, the same hit, the same angle, the same person, same racket, same strength on the uh, on the on the on the wires of the racket, strings of the racket, same brand of ball. When you hit it, it bounces in different angle, different velocity, different place, because the weaves of that screen that you're practicing on, that the ball hits on it, is changed. Your consciousness is the same. Your advancement through life changes the ingredients and the contents of the consciousness, how it's put together. So therefore, its understanding, its depth, its wisdom will reflect on the experience, even though it's the same experience you had it last week or last year, it will be different. So certainly you will not have the same experience as you had with that other girlfriend. You will not have the same feeling, the same things as you had with that other girlfriend, if you have one now, but it could be very much amazing and yet different. Yes, it won't be the same because your expressions and your emotions and your wisdom or depth or reactions to things at a certain time in space, certain stage of your life is going to be different to same experience, but now it's going to be different. Again, you can't compare. Maybe this will be better. Yeah, maybe it won't be the same, but it could be better. So you never know and don't don't say it that way. <sighs> okay. Yeah. And oh my God, OMG Keenan says, uh, thanks, Mehran. The job doesn't pay the that good with inflation now hopefully god willing god will bless me and with a new opportunity doing something i love yes yes true you can of course you can yeah you can always keep your eyes and ears open and if new opportunity comes up might as well enjoy it you know jump on it danny gus this is breakup. Danny, uh, I need age, gender, where you're tuning in from before I get to your question. Okay. Everybody remember, age, gender, where you're tuning in from. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind, add that, and I'll get to you, get to your question. This is uh, break off, okay. Nielsen Sharma says, oh my God, it's amazing, guys. Do this breathing thingy now. Yeah, okay, good. Wow, okay, Neil, Neilish. I'm glad you enjoy this. How many people did that breathing thing that I asked you to do? Put a one, that means you did. Put a two, that means you didn't. Come on. Quickly, quickly, quickly. To have a sip of my tea. You guys put a one, the ones who actually did that breathing, short breathing, anti-anxiety thing. Hey, look at that. My cup has that. <laughs> bullseye thing on it. One, two, three. That's it? Out of 17 people, only three people did the anti-anxiety anxiety breathing thing when, I, when we were doing it? Are you kidding me? Mazakaral didn't do it. Thanks for the honesty. <laughs> 
that's it the hell with you guys we're gonna do it again right now and i want all of you do it god damn it all of you one two three four five people have done it. okay ready we're gonna do it together so we're gonna breathe it looks like this don't do it now just look at me breathe once and top it off and then hold and then let it out out, out of your mouth or wherever you I mean you know it's not wherever <laughs> I'll be challenging wherever. And then slowly with certain pressure. And when it's done, just breathe normally and relax. So here we go. It looks like this. When you exhale, then breathe normally. so good there is no thoughts of any kind in my head it's like giving a break to this constant activity and everything's calm and then you can hit it again this time we're gonna do it together all of you okay all goddamn 11 of you I mean God bless 11 of you <laughs> so ready let's go breathe in one and two Normally, ah, oh, hmm, oh. it's so good. Isn't that great? God bless Dr. Uberman. Uberman. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now let me know how many of you did that. You can do two, three, four, five times, however, as many as you want at the same time or during the day. Each time, two, three times, or one or two times, however you feel, or one time, whatever. Mm. Dennis Marincas says, I just watched your breakup video, lost the love of your life video, you free made by ego. Mm -hmm. Very nice video. Thank you for that. I'm glad that you liked it and you found it. So now the ones who did do the breathing with me, put a one. I want to see how many people did now. There's 13 people. I got to see 11 at least. So please put a one, the ones who did that. Ah, thank you. Maza Karal has done it. One. Dennis, thank you. Teddy, thank you. OMG, thank you. Phoenix, thank you. Orlando, thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six seven seven out of 11 okay at least better than last time <laughs> okay <clears throat> now I think we have answered all the questions other than Danny because Danny did not seem to wish to let us know his age gender where he tunes in from which city that's the only requirements we have to answer questions, so we won't get to his, I guess. Okay. But nevertheless, let's uh, answer Danny's question as well. Danny says, breakup has flooded me almost two months now. She found someone else before, before I was asked to leave. She found someone else before I was asked to leave. 
it's taken control of my life to the point I've barely been working or taking care of myself. I see. So let's be honest. Do you enjoy the fact that you're not working, you're not making money, and that you're not taking a shower, you're not sleeping right, or you, you just... Uh, not taking care of yourself. Do you like that? Do you like to stink? Do you like having no motivation? Do you like to feel like a loser? Is that the feelings that you prefer to have in life? Not working, not be productive, not feel good about yourself. Is that what you like? I mean, if that's what you like, well, hey, great. You you have it. You have it. Jubilant. You have what you like. Not working, not making money, not cleaning up, not looking after yourself, not exercising, not being happy not motivated, not enthused, feel like a loser. Well, if that's the aim and goal of your life, well, you've achieved it. And it didn't take too much to achieve it. All it took was some girl not wanting you, some girl exercising her prerogative to make decisions for herself. And that broke you. So guess what else can break you? If that simple personal act can break you, that somebody makes a different choice and her choice regulates your happiness or unhappiness. I mean, how independent do you think you are if that's the case in you? That somebody else's choice of wanting to be in a relationship with you or not wanting to be in a relationship with somebody else or not actually changes your level of happiness and accomplishment in life. How in control are you in life? I mean, we're never in control in our life by itself anyhow, let alone just allowing somebody else's choices <laughs> decide for my level of enjoyment and happiness and contentment and accomplishment in life. I'm really fucked up then, am I not? I'm like the under the feet of that person who made the decision that I'm considering that decision should also extend to regulate my life, my level of happiness. That's a fucked up brain. And it's not because of disease or anything that you're not in control of it. It's fucked up because you chose to let it be fucking you up. And if that's the, your choice, and that's you allow it, then that's your choice. Why? Because it's a choice. It's not a mandate. It's not something that anyone can make you to be a loser, not to wash yourself, not to work. She has no power. It's your choice to allow her power to be sourced out from your accepting that her choices affects you the way it does. But when you actually recognize that you're a free man, you have a choice. You can be sad and miserable, and you can be happy and don't give a fuck. You think if you're happy and you don't give a fuck, that's a disrespect to the love that you had for her. It's a sin. I can't let go my love for her if I don't give a fuck and just think of her the way she is. A bitch. A fucked up, cheating, fucking bitch. Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. Why? She is, isn't she? She already was with you, but she found somebody else. Then she told you, fuck off. That makes her a bitch. That makes her a dishonest woman, not worth spending a moment on her. Yet, you chose to accept her choice and her behavior to trump your needs and your your preferences and to have made that decision for you that i'm gonna go do what i want to do but i want you to be miserable and piece of shit and not make anything out of yourself but that's not on her she what's on her is only the mistake or the betrayal or the shitty behavior that she had that's on her not on you but the fact that you allow yourself to lay down there and bend over and say, I'm nothing, that's your choice. Because nobody can make you feel that way. Only you can. And you've decided instead of moving on to do your best in your job, make more money, to take care of yourself and be 
groomed up and clean and then impress another girl and go and find another companion and another girl prettier than her or not, but better in here. Hmm? Instead of doing that, you have chosen to give power to someone else's choice in life and behavior in life to regulate and control the quality of your life. That's on you. So it's a choice. Nothing can stop you. There's nothing wrong with you. You haven't been hurt. Your image has been hurt. We talked about it earlier. But you yourself are healthy and strong and nothing has happened to you. Nothing has You're the same person as you've always been. You're the same great person with the great personality or whatever it is that you've had as before. Somebody else's choice cannot affect your life in that way. You can be sad about it. We do. We lose our bicycle, we'll be sad. Because we were attached to it. It was mine. I would, you know, be riding it. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but in cases of her, you should think of her as a village bicycle. Everybody has a ride. <laughs> and for that reason, you don't mind the bicycle that disappears. You go get a new bicycle. Something that is exclusive and not just everybody in the village <laughs> can have a ride. So think about it. You're a righteous man and you're independent and her actions should not be able to affect you that much. Yeah, it affects all of us. Every time that a woman is with us and changes her mind for whatever the fuck the reason may be, we get dis disappointed. Yes, and it could affect our mood. Yes, but it should not fucking stop you from surviving and living and attending to your duties and responsibilities because that's then it's the real effect on your life and that's on you not on her. People are free to make their decisions and their choices. But you're also free to how to deal with those things that makes you uncomfortable or makes you disappointed. Am I going to lay down and take it and just be sad and not be productive in my life and not happy? Or am I going to say, oh, fuck it. Okay, that happened. I'm pissed off. But while pissed off, I can still do what I want to do because I want to change things. It's like saying I'm fucking in the ocean with my ship, with my crew, and there's a wave. And I'm unhappy about this wave and I'm happy about this weather. It's raining. Fuck it. I just give up. I don't do anything. Nobody roll. Or what? I'm pissed off but I'm still fucking going to roll because I don't want to be stranded right in the middle of the fucking ocean and just sink. And you get nowhere. Or you're in your ship with your crew and suddenly a bad news happens that uh, your stock, uh, you know, whatever you bought, it just plummeted and you you lost, uh, you know, $100,000 or $2,000 or $1,000 or I don't know, whatever. And you're in the middle of the ocean. Oh, I'm pissed off. I'm angry. I'm disappointed. Oh, something ruined my... And then you find out that somebody embezzled money and that's why the stock went down. Oh, I'm pissed off. I'm angry. I, I'm just not going to roll. Nobody roll. Fuck it. Let's die here. We don't eat. We don't take shower. We don't roll. We stay in the middle of the ocean. That's what you're doing. Somebody else's mistake and a fuck up based on whatever was suitable to them is going to determine your future instead of being happy, you decide to let it die, rot, because you're angry. Your anger, your emotional reaction to someone else's choice is actually guiding you to fuck up your own life. Is that logical? If it is, stay where the shit you are. If you see it's not, your, your, your choice is the reason and the cause of your unhappiness and dissatisfaction and uh, unsuccessful life, then change the choice. Then say, fuck it. I know the stock is shit, but we got to get through this ocean and this storm. Row harder. We row harder. Because we want to get to the, to, this, to the shore faster so we can remedy and get on with our lives, and sell our merchandise, make money, and recoup. So row stronger, row harder, take good care of yourself, clean your home, do your things, go to your job, get a job if you have lost it, and rebuild. That's how you deal. That's your choice. That's under your command. It's got not a shit to do with what she does, what she doesn't do. Don't let other people 
Make decisions of your life. Don't let other people get a hold of the brush that you draw your, the picture of your life. You are the painter. You are the artist. Keep the brush in your hand. Make your own choices according to what is good for you, what is not good for you. Make a right decision and don't bow to other people's decisions to affect your life. Okay, having said that, let's go on to... Ah, Danny came through. Danny said 37 male. It's supposed to be male. It says make it. And U.S. Okay, thank you very much for that. I already answered your question. Orlando says, Mehran, do you recommend avoiding places that your ex attends and, and places with memories of her? No, actually. For a while, maybe. But the sooner you get to those places with other friends or yourself and finish all the fucking ruminations that you do while you're there. Oh, I was here. I killed her hand. I kissed her, this and that, so forth. But then eventually you start creating new memories in that place beyond the memories that you had. Not to make a habit of an everyday go there. No, it's just going to, it's like sticking a needle into your yourself, just <laughs> annoying yourself. But every once in a while, if some friends wanted to go there, go with friends. Go with friends. And don't be sad and, you know, pussy face every time that you're there with your friends. Oh, I'm thinking of her. Okay, go through it, but Keep active, be part of the group, and do things to create a new energy, a new memory for that same old place. So next time, other times, when you get there, you're not be thinking about it. It doesn't represent the relationship with that girl anymore. It represents a restaurant that so many other things happened there. But now the most recent ones is your memory with your friends. So you change the memories. You change the content of the memory that, that those places will bring for you. But you don't have to go to all those places. After a while, you won't be thinking about it so much anyhow. When you go there, you may be sad for a while, but you kind of get out of it because you've generally have gone out of it and moved on. It says, after seven weeks of our separation, I know if I ran into her, I would not feel okay, especially if I see her with someone else, which I understand it's, it's bound to happen. Yeah, okay, so what? Do you think she's going to be a, uh, living in a convent the rest of her life? She's going to be fucking somebody else. She's probably already spread her legs for somebody else. So accept that. And accept that she's not the only game in town. And I actually don't want to be with her. The problem in this situation is that you still want to be with her. You want her. The key is to unwant her. When you actually let go of this desire that i got to have her. She's my hunt. I want her. She's mine. No, fuck it. I don't want anybody to belong to me who doesn't want to belong to me, who's not committed by herself. I don't want that person. So even if she was mine, but now decided not to be mine, I don't give a fuck about her. I don't want her to be mine. I want to find somebody else who's willingly and encourages herself, wants to get to know about me and to be in a relationship with me. That's the person I'm going to value, not the person who already showed me that she was, but she's not anymore. So why would I want to be with her? Why would I want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with me? Doesn't make sense. Always remember what my father said to me once. If this wheel doesn't turn for me, I don't care if it turns at all. So I say that the same to you. If this wheel doesn't turn for you, you don't care if it turns at all. So if as beautiful, as wonderful, and as everything she is, if it's not giving it to you, if it's not offering her friendship, companionship, love to you, it doesn't matter how beautiful, how wonderful, how amazing she is. If this meal that is prepared on this table is not for me to eat, I don't care how delicious it is. I'm going to have my sight on the one that I'm going to be looking for to have and to eat. Same thing. Whether she's with somebody else or not, whether you run to, uh, run into her or not, whether you go to the places or not, regardless of what memory comes to your head, if you are knowing and you convinced, you have come up to understand that she is not offering what she can or what she did to you, then it's not your concern and you don't give a shit about to be sad about not having it because it's not for you anyhow. So I'm not going to, you know, have grief on something that doesn't want to be mine. 
I want to focus on something that wants to be mine. So therefore, I unwant her for this very reason that she doesn't offer what is there to be offered to me. She doesn't offer it to me. For that very reason, I don't want her. So I unwant her. I am ready to free myself to say as great as it was and as wonderful the image I had made of her in my mind and how I'm going to spend my time, how I'm going to negotiate, how she's going to be, as, as amazing as that was, I simply just, hang on guys, I got to get this. Okay, guys, sorry about that. So where was I? Mm. So anyhow, I don't remember where I was. <laughs> but I think we, we did the gist of it. Um, who was it that I was talking about? Anyhow. Oh, it was Orlando. Uh, so, okay, yeah. All right. So I guess I don't remember how to end it, but it's ended. <laughs> and Danny says, that is definitely not what I like. Okay, I feel I kind of trapped in the past or future. It's never happened to me before. Okay, I don't follow because I went on to a different question, but no problems. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> And Orlando said, one thing that really bothers me mentally is the fact that I feel betrayed. Yeah. For that reason, you got to watch my video on betrayal. The feeling really upsets me. Yes, we always hate to be betrayed. Why? Because we always think we are the top dog of all men. We are the best, most equipped, most qualified for any woman. So if she happened to go with somebody else, that indirectly means that somebody else is better than me, which is a total bullshit because you're actually allowing one woman's choice of not wanting to be with you and wants to be with somebody else for whatever the fuck the reason is to become the ultimate deciding factor and judgment on you that who is better than you and you're not better than other men. How could one person's choice one incident, one preference, whether right or wrong, but it's right in her mind, could actually alter your qualities in regards to who you are and how amazing of a man you are just because this person chose somebody else to spread her legs for. But that's how we are built. We're so competitive and we think we are the male that every woman should want. And we get hurt when the woman actually gives it to somebody else. And you should get beyond that and figure out that as one woman, one decision, one mind, one preference, one taste, which has nothing to do. It's like me saying, 
the kind of food that I actually vomit on, somebody else really loves. That means that food is better than any other food that I like. Why should you like the food that you don't like? You don't like it, and regardless of how many other people may like it, you still don't like it because it's not qualified, it's not palatable for you, to your standards. That's it. And this girl happened to like somebody else. That doesn't make that guy so better than you or better than anybody else. It's her preference, not the world's preference, not the concept of manhood and the woman's choices of all times to be that. It's only one girl's. So that personal preference of her will not, cannot alter your qualities and your being who you are and your righteousness, your top dogness, and your um, whatever. The man that you think you are. You deserve to be, and you are, still are. That doesn't change. So you got to change your mentality rather than thinking about, oh, I was betrayed. Therefore, because I was betrayed, then I'm not good enough. And that's the translation of it, which is a problem. Now, let me give you that video in regards to... Betrayal. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to give you this video. I haven't watched this for a long time. It's been, it was done a long while ago. I don't know how relevant it will be now, but. Nevertheless, I think it will be. Let's see, when did I make this? Hmm. There's a date. This was made six years ago. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Do I not have any other? There we go. All right, there we go. Uh, this is the one I want you to watch. This is the one I want you to watch. Uh huh. Uh huh. That one is called Have You Been Betrayed? And the other one is called Do You Feel Betrayed by Your Ex? I'm going to put that up as well. It's another link for you. <clears throat> and then the last one is She Left Me, I Feel Betrayed. Okay, so you got a good bunch of videos for your question. This is like a pharmacy. You come in, you say what you want, and I just give you the prescription. <laughs> <laughs> the video. I don't have to talk anymore. <laughs> okay. And he says, um, that feeling really upsets me because I know she was devious and she hid truth about her prior boyfriend and other men. I know she doesn't deserve me nor my time, but I can't help feel angry. At her and somehow I want to get even yeah well don't get even you're getting even is by moving on finding another girlfriend yeah you feel like you know you've been disrespected your manhood eh, none of that means anything because she's nobody to have any kind of a uh, effect on your manhood your top dognessness whatnot it just means a personal uh, preference of hers is lacks information and proper values and qualities that she should be looking for, and she's not up to par with your credentials and your values and your, uh, you know, uh, what you have to offer. It's just, just like saying somebody goes to a, a jewelry store and they put a glass, crystal, zirconian, cubic zirconian, and diamond. Same shape, same cut, same kind of design, same ring, same everything. And she chooses the crystal or the cubic zirconian. Does her choice make the value of the diamond one in the, in the lineup less? No, it doesn't. 
It just means she can't tell the difference and she's not equipped or deserving or knowledgeable enough to appreciate quality of the diamond because to her, she's oblivious. So she chooses cubic zirconian or she chooses glass or she chooses the crystal. But choosing any one of those does not automatically reduce the value of the diamond. It just means she can't tell. She's not qualified to seek a diamond because her understanding, her level of understanding and expectation is that crystal, is that glass, is that cubic zirconian. It doesn't make any difference to the diamond's value. It's still as precious, still as sought after, still as valuable as ever. So her choice is inconsequential in the interpretations that you're coming up with. Therefore, it shouldn't really matter. You shouldn't even give it them because it has made no change to you, who you are, your capabilities, your manhood, or whatever other credentials and credibilities you have. All right, guys, it's been a, oh my goodness, it's been a long time. We've answered all the questions, two hours, 42 minutes. My goodness, that's a long one. And so it's time for me to say I love you all. Thank you very much for being here, giving the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I look forward to our next uh, live stream. In the meantime, have a very Merry Christmas and hope you will have a great New Year. But hopefully between now and New Year, we will have other live streams. I try to have live stream maybe, 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 maybe every day. Maybe, I'm not sure, depending on my time, or at least a couple of more times or maybe one more time on Saturday before the new year. So in the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.